Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Android App Arena is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This is Android App Arena, episode 42 for Wednesday, April 22nd, 2015. File Explorers. This episode of Android App Arena is brought to you by SmartThings. SmartThings lets you monitor, control, and automate your home from wherever you are using your smartphone. Right now, SmartThings is offering Android App Arena listeners 10% off any home security or solution kits and get free shipping in the U.S. when you go to smartthings.com slash twit and use the offer code twit at checkout. Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Android App Arena. I'm your host, Jason Howell. If you run stock Android on your device you'll likely encounter a time when you need to get down and dirty with the file structure of your device. Sure, apps can access your storage space in many handy ways, but sometimes the best choice, the easiest choice, is a plain old file explorer that allows you to dive into those folders, sort some stuff by modified date, copy, paste, delete, all that kind of stuff. But stock Android doesn't have a file explorer by default. Kind of amazed at this point. Device manufacturers will often ship their own file management solutions on their devices to fill that gap. They aren't always that amazing in reality. Well, big surprise, developers have created a huge amount of alternative file explorers. And this week, I picked three that seemed like some of the best of the category. Each of these apps follows the material design spec to a large degree and is being actively updated. So you kind of can't go wrong. But let's pit them against each other and see which one is left standing when the dust settles in this week's Best of the Best. First up is a file explorer that is material design at its core. In fact, it's only compatible with Android 4.1 or above. It's called Cabinet Beta. If you have any experience with material design, you will automatically feel right at home here. Not to mention, the UI is filled with nice, subtle animations as you jump from section to section. Starting off, you'll get the file list of the internal storage, and you can tweak the look a little bit to fit your taste. Just tap that overflow menu at the top and then grid size to pick between three different styles. Icons are large, while still presenting enough glanceable info about each file. I'll tap into a folder and you see a list of files within and the menu dots on the side of each file. This gives direct access to your standard actions, things like copy, paste, move, rename, share. You can turn any file or collection of files into an archive by tapping archive, that turns it into a .zip file. And of course, you can extract that from cabinet beta as well. As you tap into your directory tree, the path is placed at the top in a nice and subtle way, so you can jump in and out quickly on that tree. The floating action button creates a new file, a new folder, or a remote connection for adding remote servers by SFTP that can be accessed inside Cabinet Beta. The side menu gives you shortcuts to other places on your drive. First, root file access, which you can disable in the settings if you know you have no business going there, and yes, Cabinet does have support for rooted devices, which is nice for the tinkerer. Other shortcuts include DCIM for camera snaps, there's download, music, and pictures for any images that other apps on your device might create. And finally, there's a nice theming engine in the settings, as well as a small handful of behavior tweaks to be found. Check out Cabinet Beta for free in the Play Store with the option to donate to the developer inside the app. Next up, an alpha version of a already popular file explorer. And though you'll have to jump through a few hoops to get it installed on your device, I think you'll like what you see. It's called Solid Explorer 2.0 Beta. And in order to see the updated version, you'll have to do a few things. You have to search for the Google Plus community called Neat Bytes. You join that community and then you follow the Solid Explorer 2.0 Beta link in the community description. That way you can become a tester. And once you've done that, follow the link to the new Play Store page that enables you to download the beta. Phew, 
Okay, with that out of the way, Solid Explorer 2.0 Beta has a lot in common with Cabinet in terms of its material design approach. Choosing between different view modes is actually a bit more clear here with icons that illustrate the different modes, and you also get sort options added to the drop-down menu as well. Tap into a folder to explore the files, and any actions you wish to execute on a particular file is done by tap and holding on that file to select. Then the colored bar at the top, you'll see suddenly icons appear for the basics, cut, copy, and delete. And then there's the overflow menu giving you everything else, creating an archive, selecting all files, renaming, and creating a shortcut to a file or folder among others. Tapping properties takes you to a cool page of expanded info about that particular file. For example, an image will show you all of the expanded metadata tied to that particular image file. The floating action button is where you'll create a new file or a new folder, or you can set up a Cloud Drive account with tons of options, Dropbox, Google Drive, OneDrive, FTP, and a lot more. And those connected cloud accounts now appear in the side slide out menu for easy access once you've connected them. And yes, shortcuts to all different locations on your storage, including root and hidden folders. Settings reveal a nice theming engine, a security option so you can password protect access to your files, and some basic file settings, including a cool horizontal dual pane mode that makes file management a little bit easier. And you can back it all up when you dial it in just right. Solid Explorer 2.0 Beta can be found for free to beta testers, but once the beta is pushed live, you'll be asked to pay $1.99 for unlimited access. So search for the Neat Bytes community in Google Plus to get started. And finally, a longtime favorite of many that has a fresh, more modern look called FX File Explorer. And yes, it's been materially enhanced, but it takes the design spec into a whole different direction from the last two. Bright, colorful icons on the home screen of the app indicate the various sections of your file structure that you'll want to browse. Of course, you'll get the standard locations like images, download, documents, and of course, main storage for navigating the directory tree in a more traditional way. Any action you want to take on a file or folder happens by way of tap and holding on the file, which then pops up an expanded floating menu of actions. And gestures work. So pinching zooms in and out of your current view, showing you more or less. Now, you can also jump to some of the more advanced sections from that home screen. Many of these are only available to FX Plus users. More on that in a second. But tapping on apps lets you view an exhaustive list of details about apps you've installed, system apps, and even a way to check out apps that require a specific permission. Upgrading to Plus for $2.99 brings cloud storage into FX File Explorer with support for services like Box, Drive, Dropbox, and more. Plus also gives access to Bluetooth and FTP capabilities. Now, cleaning tools allows you to do something I actually have missed on my device, removing duplicate files, which is a nice space-saving feature. You can also show the largest files that might be hogging space. And this slide-out menu is meant to keep track of open windows. Basically, you navigate to a location, slide out that menu, and hit the floating plus icon. That saves it as an open window, which is kind of like a temporary shortcut, as you can easily remove it with close all. Or you can tap split view to see both of those locations side by side to make things easier. Settings is packed full of customization options, security settings, and a comprehensive theming engine to boot. FX File Explorer is busting at the seams with configuration and detail. You can try the Plus upgrade by installing FX File Explorer for free in the Play Store with a $2.99 upgrade to Plus if you like what you see. All right, there you have it. Three file managers, all with a bit of, you know, material design influence, as you saw. And in retrospect, they each seem to kind of ramp up the functionality from the previous one. Cabinet is great as a baseline file explorer, but I think lacks a lot of that geeky tweakability that you might be looking for. Solid Explorer 2.0 Beta adds more features and cloud support, which I think is kind of a big deal in a file manager these, these days. It kind of makes things uh, super convenient. And then, of course, FX File Explorer goes even further, adding any more features, some of which sit outside the norm of file explorers, like the app's permissions browsing, among other things. And in this regard, if I had to pick one to be my favorite uh, of the file explorers this week, it would 
probably be difficult to choose between Solid Explorer 2.0 beta and FX File Explorer. And in some cases, too many features can be a disadvantage as it can kind of cloud up the experience. But when it comes to file explorers, I actually think the more features, the better. You want maximum capability when it comes to controlling the files on your device. So for that reason, I'm going to go ahead and go with FX File Explorer this week as the winner of the best of the best. I know that sits at the top of a lot of people's favorite lists. I saw it online, and now so it does on mine. All right, before we move on, let's thank the sponsor of today's episode. That would be Smart Things. Some cool stuff here. Smart Things has made it easier than ever to turn your home into a smart home. Many of you have dabbled with home automation in the past, so you know it's use, you know it used to be expensive. To get started, most companies use proprietary systems, each with their own uh, user experiences. SmartThings changes all that. This is the SmartThings hub. It controls lights, locks, security, everything through a simple iOS, Android, or Windows phone app. That's because it's an open platform. It works just as well with its own sensors, which you can see here. This is the temperature and humidity sensor right here, uh, as it does with connected devices from Dropcam, Schlag Locks, Honeywell Thermostats. Uh, and so many more. Th uh, Smart Things is so revolutionary, it won the CES 2015 Editor's Choice Award. Just a few ways I'd use Smart Things in my home, you know, home automation for one, turn on your lights uh, or turn them off from your phone. Have your music play when you enter the house. Uh, security, you can get alar uh, alarms or alerts if there's unexpected movement or entry in your home. You could set up a camera to take a bunch of photos when Suddenly there's unwanted motion or entry that's detected. Uh, save energy, restrict your electricity flow to electronics or appliances after a set period of time. You can even protect yourself from water damage, get water detection, immediate alerts on your smartphone if water's detected where it doesn't belong. This could save you thousands of dollars in repairs. With no required monthly fees and kits starting at just $189, SmartThings is an affordable way to create your smart home. And just for our Twit audience, SmartThings is offering you a chance to save more. Get 10% off any home security or solution kit and free shipping in the US when you go to smartthings.com slash twit and use the offer code twit. That's smartthings.com slash twit. Use the offer code twit. And we thank SmartThings for their support of Android App Arena. All right, this week's big app takes a word I hate, selfies, and turns it into a social network. Let's take a look. <sighs> Selfies. Love them or hate them, it's totally a thing. Heck, it was a thing before it had a name. I've been taking selfies for years, to be honest, but that name, I hate it. Anyways, so we agree that selfies are here to stay, so why not revel in them, celebrate them? That's kind of what Kong is all about. Kong is developed by the PATH team, so they know a thing or two about social. Once you sign up for a Kong account, you'll wanna add some friends so they show up on your home screen inside the app. That allows you to keep tabs on the latest selfies they've posted to various channels. And I know that sounds shallow, the latest selfies, but the channels is where Kong gets fun. Tap the menu button to take a look at channels that you've contributed to as well as other featured channels at the moment. You can search and create your own channels as well. Each channel poses a different challenge, let's say, for your budding creativity. Go into Pound Spin, and you'll see a number of different Kong users giving their take of a selfie that's influenced by spinning in some way. Lots of spinning here. There's Pound Coffee, and you'll see a lot of different ways people drink coffee, or make coffee, or in my case, drink it right from the carafe. Pound Kong is kind of random, but that means you can get super creative with that channel and do just about anything. Scanning through any particular channel has enough movement and chaos to make your head spin, but it all really feels kind of like Vine creativity smashed into a one-second animated GIF. When it comes time to add your own, you can swipe on your selfie before recording it to add filters and do some screen warping effects. And you can tap the bottom to add some text to it as well, if you like. Then tap to record and let go when you're done recording. And you're also given a number of ways that you can share it outside of Kong's playground. I balked at Kong at first. Then I found myself returning to it and thinking about ways I can contribute more to it. It's fun, if not 
overtly narcissistic, but hey, this is the social web we're talking about here. So if this sounds appealing to you, well, you'll feel right at home. Express your selfie. Check out Kong for free in the Play Store. Uh, yeah, kind of a guilty pleasure, uh, that Kong app. I've already taken uh, <laughs> taken quite a few uh, selfies with it and talked to a few close friends of mine to sign up, and it's been pretty fun watching them make fools of themselves. As for me, making a fool of myself comes naturally, so it's a perfect fit. Uh, I love hearing from you guys. Your suggestions, as always, are very helpful. I appreciate you sending those in to me each and every week. I definitely read them. I put them in my handy, uh, fancy schmancy Google Doc where I keep all those suggestions for future episodes. So send me what, whatever you have. Send it to arena at twit.tv, and I'll put your suggestion in a Google Doc as well. There's also a subreddit for the show. I post categories there from time to time. I need to update it with a few. Maybe I'll do that tonight. And uh, ask you to take a look at the category, throw in your favorite app that fits that category, and if I get enough upvotes or a good idea from that, I'll pull that into a future episode. That's androidapparena.reddit.com. And you can follow me on Google+. Plus. I talked about, you know, Google's MVNO, Project Fi today. So a lot of Android-related ramblings there. Just search for me there. I also host a live viewing party of each week's episode where I'll be on set to answer questions that you might have about the apps that are featured in the show. And then beyond that, anything Android. That happens every Wednesday at 4.30 p.m. Pacific following Tech News Tonight at live.twit.tv. Of course, if you missed the live, the live taping, don't worry. You're going to get it in your feed if you subscribe. You can find all the details to subscribe at twit.tv slash arena. That's all you need to know. All right, that's it, folks. Thank you so much for joining me today. My name is Jason Howell, and I'll see you next week in the arena.